So, I know some of you participated in Black Friday because I saw you at Walmart. I was there on Friday afternoon and I was really surprised it wasn't very crowded. I mean, as crowded as it could have been. And there were people, you know, kind of scurrying around making sure they got the right gift for the right person. I just needed soap and coffee. You know how it is in Christmas time when you just really need like an essential thing and here's, you have to fight the crowd to get into, to get whatever you need. And isn't it hard to buy stuff for somebody that has everything? Yeah, yeah. So when I got home, I was looking for webs uh, websites because my sister is really hard to buy for. So I was looking at these new gadgets that are practical, but yet kind of goofy. So the first one, Tina, is called the the one on. It's called the Doozap. So it's a portable dolly, and it folds. See, it folds down practically flat, and you can put it in the back of the car. So when you got a lot of heavy junk to bring around. It's right there. So the next one was the automatic tape dispenser. It's called the RT3700. I think this is for people that don't know what gift bags are. You know? I mean, why wrap it when you can put it in a bag? That's right. So the next one, this is, would be for my dog. So she doesn't whine at the back door. She can just touch the doorbell with her, the doggy doorbell with her nose. Isn't that something, huh? Yeah. And then look at this next one. This is just for Wyoming. These are heated uh, mats for your snow and ice for your steps. And notice where these all came from. Oddity Mall. That's what the, that's what the website's called, Oddity Mall. You know, I kind of like things that are odd and funny, because they're funny and they're practical. I don't know, and there's so much bad stuff in the world. You know what I mean? It's kind of fun to look at goofy stuff once in a while. Yeah. Do you realize that there's war in Syria, Gaza, the West Bank, Israel, Afghanistan, Hong Kong, and other places throughout the world? Isn't that sad? Conflict. Can you imagine everyday life just filled with conflict? So, but closer to home, we have conflicts in our families. People aren't not as courteous as they used to be, are they? No, not at all. And they have school lockdowns in schools now. That was something we never had. I mean, that makes me feel old. But anyway, we just, yeah. So the world is not always a pleasant place. So the last place that I went on Black Friday was Walgreens to pick up a prescription. And there was a long line. And, you know, the pharmacists and the staff were back there waiting on people. And there was this one, when I got in line, there was this one lady at the counter, and her voice kept getting louder and louder. And so everybody in that part of the store knew that she couldn't get her prescription refilled because in the computer it said that she already had enough of the medicine. And she said, well, I'll just go home and dig through the trash and get the bottle and bring it back. The pharmacist said, well, it won't do any good because what's on the computer is what we have to go by. And so she, she stomped away, and then she turned around and really loud, just, oh, all these obscenities. And everybody's like, hmm. You know, how that, you know how that is when somebody starts doing that? You're like, hmm. <laughs> don't look at her. Don't look at her. She'll cuss at me. <laughs> so anyway, the pharmacist just said, you can't come back. If you're not acting better, you're going to have to find another pharmacy. Well, I think so. And I, I don't know if that's like the best way to solve a problem. But anyway. I just think that there's lots of times and places that maybe we need to be more polite and not make conflict happen. So there's this man and his family and they went on vacation. They went to this cabin. It was remote and there wasn't electricity. And they wanted to get away from it all. So at bedtime, his son said, it's darker with my eyes open than they are with my eyes shut. It's too dark in here. So dad with a flashlight rummaged around and in the junk drawer found a glow-in-the-dark nightlight. This kid was right that the cabin was too dark. Think about the times in our lives when it feels darker when our eyes are open. Yeah, you have, huh? Yeah, I think we all have. And sometimes it's really hard to live in that darkness because it seems like it's going to last forever. 
So, but when we walk in the darkness, sometimes it's because we have problems in our relationships. We have family members who are sick or dying. Our, we worry about our kids. We worry about our friends. How about teenagers who go to school and they're absolutely convinced that everybody hates them? Are you? Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> but you certainly don't slip into despair over it, do you? Hmm. And I know why. Well, they're talking. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I was going to fix this, but, you know, he's got something else to say here. Huh? She won't let him talk? Is that true? You won't let him talk? Goodness, let's find a better way. All right. You're ruining my sermon. Okay. <laughs> I was saying, <laughs> well, when we walk in the light of Jesus' love, we have peace. But just think, where Jesus was born, the time he was born into, the pe there was people in power, and then there were people that lived on the margins that were oppressed. And he gave his life so that the world would know about God's love and peace. And Jesus called the Apostle Paul to bring the word to the Gentiles. And he wrote a letter to the church in Ephesus. The Ephesians is how we know that. And he wrote in a way that wasn't very detailed. It didn't have like individuals' names and stuff like that or the congregation. So it's, we can use those words very easily then to apply to our life and our relationships. So... He wrote about that they needed unity. They needed to be all one together. And so in the first century, Christians debated whether you had to become Jewish before you could become Christian. Because originally, all, did you know this, that all the people that became Christians were originally Jews? And then they became Christians. Well, then there's, there's people who were Jewish, who were pagan, nothing. I mean, no religion. They weren't nothing, they were no religion. And they wanted to become Christians, and so there's this huge debate if you had to be Jewish first before you become Christian. So anyway, that was a big deal, and it divided them. But that's not what divides us. What are the, some of the things that divide us? You know, like drugs, alcohol, politics, opinions, friends, infidelity. How about immigrant versus citizen? You know, yeah, yeah. Liberal versus conservative? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. So it's a lot easier to agree with somebody, I mean, to, have, to be unified, to be one with somebody that you agree with. It's a whole lot harder to feel that sense of wholeness or friendship with somebody that you disagree with, isn't it? Yeah, but you know what? It's a lot closer, we're closer to what God wants us to be when there's unity and diversity, meaning when we are kind and considerate to people who are a lot different than we are. Yep. So God calls us to, to act that way, to have that kind of peace. And he calls, calls us to focus on what we can do together rather than what tears us apart. So... Paul wrote this uh, wrote the letter to the church in Ephesus called Ephesians, chapter 4, verses um, 3 through 6. And he calls us to remember what holds us together. Making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, the one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all through all, and in all. So that means God is in and through everything. So we want to honor our differences and work together so that we show the world that peace is the better way to be, to be peaceful. So later in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul lists some practical instructions, that, some just ways that we can live together in peace. And <clears throat> the first one is that we speak the truth. And he says, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbor. I don't think this means all the time. 
And it doesn't mean you're going to go tell your neighbor what to do. What's that? Well, and it's probably not very safe sometimes either, is it? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. You know what? Oh, I got to tell you. Huh? Is, and they're good neighbors? <laughs> so, let me tell, I want to tell you about this one. Let me tell you about this neighbor I had in Utah. So, um, he always carried, a, he had a concealed weapon permit, and he always carried a gun. And um, so one time I was on the phone talking to his wife, and my, my dog was outside, and I heard her make a lot of noise. So I went out to look, and there was these two huge Labrador retrievers coming up to greet Eunice. Well, Eunice was this little bitty dog, and she thought she was a big dog. And so by the time I got back to the phone, my neighbor had hung up, and I heard a gunshot. And I ran outside, and there is my neighbor with his pistol. And I go, what do you think you're doing? He goes, I was shooting at those dogs. I go, well, did you kill them? He goes, no, I just scared them off. I go, get out of here. I go, you don't go shooting your gun off in my yard. Do it in your own yard. And I get back in the house, and the other neighbor, she calls me, and she said, you didn't shoot him, did you? <laughs> Well, no. Well, it, the world isn't safe, is it? But I don't think you're as <clears throat> unique as my neighbor was in Utah. <laughs> yeah. All right. How often do we need to be right? That's what we think speaking the truth is, isn't it? Most of the time. Most of the time. And sometimes I think, can we get things down wrong? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, so speaking the truth when it's appropriate. Second instruction is to watch our anger. He says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not make room for the devil. So he's saying it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be angry, but we make room for the devil when we don't own up to our anger. How many times are we mad and we take it out on other people? <laughs> when? All the time. So what happens if we just say, I'm angry? What if we own it? What if you walked away or what if you said, you know, you thought... And what do you do? Uh-huh. You can't get away, can you? You must love each other because, man, I wouldn't put up with that. Do ya? You know, peace is fostered when we're angry without demeaning another person, Reese. <laughs> so think about that. Do you, is it, isn't it hard to walk away when somebody, I don't know. Is that what you would do? Yeah. Ooh. Are you stubborn, honey? Yeah. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, thank you, Todd. Well, so does it? So, so how do you know you're making room for the devil, Marty? And pretty soon, nobody's talking to you, are they? And then you have. What do you have to? Hmm. <laughs> Mm. I'm thinking we do it too because man this isn't going over very well here <laughs> I'm not going any further with this because you're just going to make room for the devil aren't you <laughs> good oh, did you hear that they quit making room for it All right. so what's the third thing that Paul tells us he says let no evil talk come out of your mouths but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Mm. What if you didn't say anything? Did you know you have this little valve in your head? You really do. It's between your brain, your brain and your mouth. Do you have one? A little valve between your brain and your mouth? <laughs> Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. What, what? Shh. If you said the right thing and they took it the wrong way. 
There's nothing you can do, is there? But did you do the right thing by... That's right. Amen. That's right. But you can purposely say things to build people up rather than be mean to them, can't you? Yeah. That's right. You can. And that's... What's that, Tina? I think Thumper must have read Ephesians. What's Thumper's mama's name? Mrs. Thumper. Oh, okay. And my mama used to tell me that, too. <laughs> See, look at that. We've all, it's hard, easy to hear, hard to learn. Okay, the final thing Paul says. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because sometimes when you, when you forgive somebody and they need to forgive you, it doesn't happen at the same time, does it? You know why? You know why I think that? Well, I think forgiveness is a gift from God. And we can't make it happen. But we have to open our hearts. We have to be tender-hearted. We have to be kind to one another. We have to open our hearts so that God's forgiveness can come in. It doesn't happen just because we want it to. Because we told God we wanted it to. I can just see you doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Hmm. What's that? Mm-hmm. That's right. Did you hear that? Taking poison and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. So right now, think of somebody that you need to forgive. Can you think of somebody you need to forgive? We don't need to say it out loud unless you want to. Okay, you need to forgive. Okay, Tina. You need to forgive your husband. But it's hard sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yes, Marty. You say what? Oh. It's hard to forgive him, isn't it? It's hard. It isn't, you know, it's not easy. You know, it just if you just think because you're following Jesus that your life is going to be easy, it's not. It's going to be even harder sometimes. Because you've got to be kind-hearted, forgiving. You've got to speak the truth. All these things we've talked about, huh? Yes. I have an answer. Well, I d just because... That is a hard one. And it doesn't mean you have to be in relationship with them, does it? But you feel bitter, huh? No, I know that, yeah, because you would. That's true. You know my neighbor with the gun? You know my neighbor with the gun? I sure did not like him. I thought he was, aw I, he was mean, he was a bully. And I feel bad for him that he was acting that way. But I still know that somewhere, God probably loves him a whole lot more than I do. <laughs> did I what, shoot him? No. <laughs> well, I was always polite to, I was always polite to my neighbor. hard, isn't it?
Oh, absolutely. That's what I was talking about, unity. It's really easy to, it's really easy to love people that we agree with. Yeah. Soul and all your mind and all your... No, because they, right, because they push you away, just like that lady. I, I, you know, I just wanted to like, ooh, I don't want to look at you. I don't want you going off on me like that. What'd you say? No, it wasn't. I would have been on you if that would have been you at the permit. Yeah. Yeah. That's like owning our anger, owning it when we, it's like, speak, you see, aren't, you're just being honest, aren't you, Reese? Yeah, you are a very honest person. Oh, yeah, I know where I stand with you. I like that. Oh, I know you are. I know you are. Oh, I know it. I know it. All right. I know. And now, now who's your children's godmother? There you go. Perfect example. And look at this. You're, you're, you're good buddies. All right. So I want you to think about the person or persons that are hard for you to forgive. And we're going to have communion tonight. And let's ask God to work through us. Work on that. Okay? You agree to do that? To have communion? Okay. Okay.